And the champs are here. Once again, Northwest Missouri State, they defend their national championship from 2019. They take care of their business today, 80 to 54 over West Texas A&M. And joining us first is their outstanding student athlete, Ryan Hawkins. And Ryan, just what a week for you. What a week for, uh, you know, Northwest Missouri State. But kind of just talk about your feelings right now. Well, it's a great day to be a Bearcat right now, that's for sure. Um, you know, the feeling never gets old. I uh, felt like we played a pretty good game. Uh, and then the last five minutes, you know, we kind of kind of knew and it was hard to stay focused, hard to do what we needed to do defensively. Um, but, you know, at that point, the game was kind of out of touch. So, uh, overall, really good feeling right now. Your game today, 31 points, 16 or 18 rebounds, another double-double. Uh, you're going to go down in, in some of the record books uh, for this tournament run. Just talk about your play and how you were able to do some of the things that you like to do against some very tough competition this past week. Uh, really, it was just playing with the flow of the offense. Um, you know, you look at tonight, I feel like everyone had a great night offensively. We were taking what the defense was giving us. Um, we knew we had a little bit of a size mismatch uh, with three positions, and we kind of exposed it a little bit today. Um, but overall, it's just taking what the defense gives you and being uh, patient on offense and getting the best shot possible. Question from Jason Zenner from St. Joseph's. He's been around for all three national championships. What stands out about this? Uh, how old I am, probably, first <laughs> off. But uh, uh, this one's just, I feel like it was a lot more player-led uh, just because of COVID and the restrictions that we did have. Uh, you know, we had a quarantine there period right before Christmas break where we had 23 days without basketball um, and we had to find a way to stay in shape. Uh, you know, we were outside shooting in December in Maryville and it was, you know, there are days that it was cold. Um, you know, we still had guys individually going out and shooting. Uh, we'd still get you know, conditioning in out of the football field. We'd, we'd be getting uh, our work done on our own. Uh, and that's what stands out to me the most from this group. Uh, from John Dykes, uh, size advantage obviously size played a big role. Describe your mindset going in knowing you'd have that advantage working in the post. Uh, really going in, we were focused on defense and what we needed to do defensively with that size uh, advantage, um, making sure we were in our gaps and plugging so they couldn't get those free driving lanes to the rim that they get all year. Um, and I felt like we did a good job of that with our length. And then offensively, we had three guys with the mismatch and, uh, you know, went to all three of us. Uh, and it worked out pretty well for us uh, for the majority of the day. From John, has been through a lot this season, from the 23-day quarantine to the Washburn matchups. Do moments like this make it all make all of that feel worth it? Yeah, and you know, I feel like it'd be worth it even without moments like this, just because you get to create memories with your friends. Uh, you know, your teammates are the guys that you rely on every single day, and that's what you know, that's what this is all about. Um, Winning obviously makes it a lot better, and you know this feeling today is unmatched. But uh, you know it'd still be worth it just to be able to be around the guys and compete every day. From Chris Roush, what does it mean to win another title for uh, for Mac? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying we won that for Mac. I felt like we just wanted it for us, like as a group. Um, but you know, I just think it goes to show the eliteness that he is as a coach and his entire staff, all the way from assistant coach Zach Schneider down through our GAs and our managers, even, uh, and the work that they're willing to put in and they want to put in uh, every single day to get us to this moment and get us to this level, uh, so that we can compete to the best of our abilities. What a night! Nice <laughs> Wells comes in and he gets 19 for you guys. How huge was that to get him going after you and Trevor were already just clicking early on? That's from John Dykstra. Uh, he was just playing with the flow of the offense, too. You know, that's what we were all doing out on the court. Uh, and Wes was big on the defensive rebounds, too, as well as offensively. Uh, and so his impact on the game, whether he scores or not, is uh, immense. And he just does such a great job when he does get open looks. You know, he knocked down a corner three, went down low, uh, exposed his mismatch, and it worked out for us all day. Uh, West Texas head coach just said that this team – should probably be in the Division I tournament. What does it mean to hear that praise from a competitor that you just, you know, beat in a national championship game? Uh, I think it just goes to show that the level of intensity that we play with, um, you know, we knew going in defensively, we had to be sharp. Uh, and, you know, they're a very good offense that gets, gets to the rim, they get open looks at the three from that penetration. 
Uh, and we found a way today just with our attitude and our energy on defense to make sure that they didn't get those open looks. Um, I felt like we frustrated them a little bit with our length. Uh, but that's that's high praise, and it's great appreciated. Uh, another question from John Walker. Uh, you had a double-double by halftime, which was the first since 2017 by Chris. Uh, um, I'm, I know I'm going to mispronounce this. Ubu uh, Dow. Does that feel full circle that you watched him do that and now you've done it? Uh, I mean, you don't really play for that. Uh, it's just playing with the, you know, the flow of the game, you know, had a size mismatch on, uh, you know, with their lineup. So I had to make sure we were getting the D boards and making sure they only got one shot at the rim. And I felt like that was the key to the game for us. A uh, question from Hendricks Magley. A 97 and three record over the past four years, 43 straight wins on neutral courts. How will this run the program has been on over the past few years go down in NCAA history? Uh, you know, it's crazy when you like actually hear that and you think about it. That's uh, quite an impressive feat uh, for our last three years. Um, but, you know, every day you wake up and you know, we go to the gym to get better. And uh, it's having that same approach every single day that, you know, we're focusing on that process that's gotten us to this point. Uh, and we got to make sure we keep doing that. When did you from Michaela Day? When did you realize you guys could clinch the championship? When did it finally hit you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's a loaded question. Probably shouldn't answer that honestly. Um, I, I felt like through that, through the first possession, we knew we were going to be able to control the game and take what we wanted uh, on offense and make sure that we frustrated them on defense and didn't let them get in a rhythm. Uh, but then, you know, under 10 minutes left in the game, we knew they were going to try and make a little bit of a push there. But uh, they started pressing us. We started getting a couple layups. And, uh, yeah, I kind of thought it was over then. Uh, one more for uh, Ryan uh, Walker. I know you don't focus on anything individually, but being named uh, most valuable player of the tournament, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means my teammates got me open looks offensively and that we played as a unit on defense. Um, you know, it takes five guys to make one guy look good, especially on defense. Uh, and you know, our guards do such a good job of getting us shooters open. Um, and a lot of times it's fastening up a look for themselves to get someone else open. Uh, and that's what's awesome about playing with two selfless guards and then two guards on the wings with uh, Wes and Luke and Byron that they just want to play the right way. And then, you know, Isaiah Jackson gets thrown in uh, you know, the elite eight hasn't really seen the court much all year and big moment steps up and performs like we needed him to. Uh, and just goes to show the depth that this team had. Awesome. Congratulations. I've seen you play a lot of the years and never gets old watching you guys uh, and how well you perform on the big stage. So congratulations and good luck to you the rest of the way. And I hear that the baseball coach wants you to maybe pitch a little bit this spring. Is that true? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I still have it or not. Hawk, thanks so much for the time, man. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. And now uh, the head coach will slide in. Yeah, I'm going to switch chairs. All right, you got five minutes with me. That's what McDonough just said. <clears throat> Number one, what have you ever listened to, Pat Collin? I have never listened to him a day in my life. <laughs> Coach Ben McCollum, congratulations. What Thank an outstanding you. run for you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was a fun, fun group. You know, I, I think first off for West Texas, um, you know, I, they were really difficult to scout. Um, they have got really good guards. They play fast. They compete. Um, they made an unbelievable shot yesterday, and they had an unbelievable season um, to be able to make it to this point. Um, they, there's nothing that they need to hang their head about whatsoever. Um, I thought they were phenomenal and, and um, you know, our hats off to them and their program and, and all that they've done over the last few years. You got your first win today, winning the national championship. How special is that feeling, earning that milestone and winning a national championship all in the same game? Yeah, you know, it's probably, I'm sure all the, the people from Maribel already know my answer. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it, it, it's really neat to be able to win this for your kids because they put in so much effort, especially this season, you know, with all the COVID piece to it. And, and uh, it makes it a mental grind. I mean, it's a, it's a mental 
grind. And, and I said that at the beginning of the year that, you know, the team that's going to win this is, is going to be the team that's, that's the toughest mentally um, that can withstand all those things. And, you know, our kids did that today. They were fantastic. Um, you know, I, they executed a game plan. I mean, Trevor and Diego um, didn't really have to do a lot because we just kind of passed it inside the whole game. And they just, you know, it's, it just shows that just shows what winners do. Like they just don't care. Like they they just won the game and they, you know, those two, you know, are both our second, third leading scorers and, you know, they barely scored today. So um, it just shows, it shows the kind of kids that I'm, I'm, I'm able to coach. <clears throat> uh, let's open it up to yeah, Brandon Zenner from St. Joseph's. What stands out about this season in this run coach? It was probably one of the most difficult ones. Um, you know, when we got beat by Washburn the first time, we had to do a lot of soul searching and, and um, really understand and go back to being, uh, you know, Pat Riley calls it an innocent climb, um, had to get our innocence back. Uh, when you have a lot of success, sometimes you lose that innocence piece to it and um, you accidentally, you know, want more and more. In, in our whole entire program. And we needed to make sure that we had to get that innocence back and really go back to just not caring about anything other than winning. Our kids were fantastic at that. You know, all of them made sacrifices um, and it's hard to make sacrifices because, you know, we've got really good players and, and some of them have to sacrifice, some of them don't even play. And, and um, you know, it, it was probably the most difficult one just in regards to handling success um, the emotions of COVID, the emotions of last year, um, all those different things, it, it made it really difficult. Uh, question for John Walker. Coach, there was a point in your second season where you called your mom and told her you weren't sure if you could coach anymore. What is it like to look back on that moment after winning your third national championship? Yeah, um, I think sometimes you have to suffer a little bit to, to improve and you know, we suffered a couple times this year where we lost those games. And then obviously those first two seasons, I suffered quite a bit. And uh, I think in order to, to really reach some type of pinnacle, I think there needs to be some of that to, to be able to soul search and, and um, you know, where, where the programs come. I, you know, it's just, I wish I could just go through every single person that had a part of building this program because it is far from, uh, far from me. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the first group that came in, the second group, the third group, the fourth group, the fifth group. It's all those kids, all the managers, all the assistants, all the, all the everything. And, um, you know, it, it's, 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 that's, that's how you build culture and that's how you build a program is everybody, you know, puts their hand in it. So, yeah, it's pretty neat to look back at some of that stuff and, and um, you know, see how far we've come. Talk about in game tournament, the most outstanding player. Uh, just the, the tournament he had was just unbelievable. Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, he's a pretty good player. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he puts a lot of work into it, and, and he had some mismatches here. Um, um, you know, he just had a lot of mismatches here, and so we just went to him quite a bit, and, and then he was on, and he got on at the right time. And, and that, that helped us quite a bit. And, you know, cause a lot of them were probably trying to stop our two guards and, you know, he was the beneficiary, him and Luke and Wes were the beneficiary of a lot of that. Uh, question from Magley, uh, 97 and three record over the past four years, 43 straight wins on neutral courts. How will this run have been over the past few years go down in NCAA history? Um, I have to ask Colin about that. Um, I, I don't think there's been many better if there is any better. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it is, if you look back once we, you know, get to a certain point, um, I, I just don't know that, that there is. I mean, it's to, to, for these kids to perform like that, like they've lost three games and two to the same team. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty unbelievable, unprecedented really. Coach Brown made a comment we spoke with him a little bit ago that, uh, he said that you guys were playing in the wrong tournament, that you should have been playing in the Division, in the division One tournament. Talk, you know, just talk about hearing that praise from, you know, a longtime coach in Division Two that you guys just beat the national championship game. Yeah, you know, I, obviously I'm humbled by his praise. I've got a lot of respect for Coach Brown. Got a lot of respect for their program. Um, 
you know, he's great for division two because he's, he's, you know, shoot, they've lost, you know, what, four or five games over the last few years too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm humbled by that and um, certainly um, appreciate that. And, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't get overly concerned with, with that, approving that necessarily, but I, I certainly am humbled by um, that comment. Uh, question Diego in foul trouble. You couldn't use the three guard look in the first half as much as you like. Talk about your big's ability to guard their quickness. Yeah, I mean, I thought our scout was really on point, and then we we had the matchups appropriate, and then Trevor did a really good job on uh, number two um, Grant, and and that helped a ton. And then we we really shrunk the floor on him a little bit, and yeah, I thought it was great. You know, and you know, usually we we didn't don't put Diego back in with two fouls because he's such a just he's just a very violent player. But you know, I, we didn't in the first game, and and um, we still had a big lead. And I'm like, you know what? Let's try it. Diego and you know I'm going to give you you know four or five minutes here you just I just have to have you guard and I also have to have you not get a foul and um, you know he, he accepted that and uh, it was fantastic last question talk about the seniors that have made this run with you over the last uh, three four years and just what an unbelievable group of guys it's been yeah well I mean we've got two that are done um, one that's coming back but um, you know, Jaron and, and uh, Derek Lang, I, I think, you know, Jaron first, he knows the scout better than anybody on our team. And he's, he's over there. He, you know, that's the thing with him is he, he, he may not play, but he knows the scout. He knows what's going on. He encourages the guys. He's our bench leader, you know, and, and that means a lot, especially to those guys. And then Derek, a five-year career, um, just unselfish, probably the hardest worker we have. Um, we are very lucky to be able to have him in our program. He's had a big part in all these wins and we're going to miss him uh, a great deal. Uh, Only a couple more. I know we've got, I know that the guy next to you has the clock going on me. So he better. <laughs> okay. It looks like we have one more coach. Right. Um, be good. Oh, here, here we go. John Walker. Do you need oh, this more? Be good. John Walker. Yeah. All right, John. Let's see it. Do you do you need some more office space? <laughs> yeah, Hawk asked me that too. I, you know, I probably just need to get rid of my desk and build a desk out of the, the the trophies there and do something like that. But no, it's it's uh we'll put it in there and you know it'll be displayed proudly. And Brandon Gunner, final question. What do you love about winning at this rate at D2 at your alma mater? You know, I, it, it, alma mater, it doesn't necessarily make a difference in regards to that. I, I think that I've been treated very well by a lot of people at in Maryville and at Northwest Missouri State. And, you know, you want to do them right and, and you know, perform and, and represent Maryville and, and Northwest Missouri State in that community. And um, I feel like we recruit the right kids that do that. And I feel like um, we coach the right way to be able to do that. So that means a lot to us that we are able to represent um, that community and that school and, 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 you know, try to do our very best to do that um, in an appropriate manner. Great stuff today, coach. Thank you for the time, especially all week. I know we've taken up a lot of it, but we appreciate it. And congratulations on another outstanding season. Thank you. No more tests. Okay. No more. <laughs> ben McCollum joins us, and that'll wrap up all of our post-game press conferences. We want to thank all the media for all of their coverage of this year's Elite Eight down in Evansville, and we will see you next year for the Division II Men's Basketball Elite Eight. Thanks so much, everybody. <laughs>